Father's Day. How has your day been? Hope you've had a wonderful time. Respect of whatever has happened. Hey, you are alive. So we give glory to God. Today we are about to celebrate a wonderful, a very young father. But not only is he a responsible father to his children, he's doing amazing things for women and children in the Zongos, in the northern part of this country. His passion is for women and children. He's the chairman for the Afro-Arab group. Very young man with an interesting story. <laughs> who had a tough mother. Anyway, I won't tell you everything, but today we are about to celebrate an halaji, very young one, very young one, doing well for himself, for his family and for his children. I mean, I feel like spilling the bean, but no. Let me take a break. When we come back, we'll meet him. Let me say thank you to GTP for my club. This is New Style. And thank you to Brie Redra for this beautiful, very unusual, very unique style. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much. And of course, Note Cosmetics for makeup products. My makeup today, as always, by Glow in the Dark. Thank you so much. And of course, my shoes by Awos Unisex Boutique. We take a break. When we come back, we'll meet this young, amazing Al Haji. Welcome to the standpoint. As I told you earlier on, we are about to celebrate an amazing young father. Not only is he a biological father, but father to many, many because of what he's doing. His passion is what really blows my mind. And I must add that he was the first person, first person to contribute towards the 8th Muslim Women's Conference. As soon as he saw our letter, he called and he was there and we are ever grateful. My guest today, I need to wear my spectacles to get the names the name right he is ambassador al-haji salmo amadu chairman afro arab group chairman ambassador welcome to the standpoint thank you Raja. thank you so much for agreeing to come you are welcome uh Adria, thank you very much for i mean giving me the opportunity to be part of celebrating women is very very important to me because uh they are our mothers mm. and we really cherish them so i want to thank our viewers again mm. and thank you again for honoring me on this platform thank you we are privileged to honor you on this day father's day what kind of mother did you have uh, for I my like mother <laughs> i don't know how to describe her we call her Adia Maba Gadama, meaning she don't argue, mm. she don't fight, very quiet, and she has a lot of patience. Mm. And for that reason, uh, when I got my second born, which is a girl, I named her after my mother. Oh. Because I really want my daughter to take that good side of my mother. Mm. For Adia, I've never seen her fighting. Mm. When uh, my father is alive, she never fight with him. They never argue. Mm. Always she's on her own. Even if I come to her and say, Mother, mm. what do you want? She tell me she don't want anything. She never pray for me and say, My son, go and make money. No. May God give you wisdom and understanding. That's that is all. Prayer. That is all she will be doing. What about your father? My father is a great man. Mm. Alaji also... God has created him to be a special person. Mm. Whether he has or not, it gives people. Uh, He's a very generous man. Okay. And I so think that apple is. So didn't fall far from yes, the tree. Yes. If people come from the village with their problems and needs, by the time they will leave and go back, he will settle all those problems. That is the kind of man. Alaji is, and may so rest in peace. What kind of father would you say you are and want to be? For me, I see myself as father of all people. Mm. As a young man growing in a deprived community with a lot of challenges here and there, I always say problem will never be finished in life. Mm. 
today this, tomorrow this. I try as much as I can to make sure that I serve my people. Mm. I want to give my children what I did not have from my parents. Mm. For example, when you talk about education, mm. I make sure that my kids, they are going to a very good school. Right. And I'm working hard planning for them so that at the end of the day, we don't own this life. It's in the hands of Allah. Mm. Even if you are not there, you have already, I mean, package them well so that at the end of the day, they will not lack certain things that we have. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, we are good, mm -hmm. but in life, we always look for improvement. Right. I want to be a father that, that everybody can come to me. Mm -hmm. And I think God has given me that blessing. I'm not father for my kids alone, not for even today, mm -hmm. elderly people come to me and then they, they say, we have given you the elderly role. Not because of money or something like that, but because of how we handle issues. Mm -hmm. I grew up with a lot of old men, and it's a blessing to me. Mm -hmm. Even today, before we come to this program, Yona, Paramount Chief of Savlubu, has visited me in my office. You look at how honored I am. Yeah. These people will not just wait in, in my office before this interview. So I am father for all and i have a lot of fathers too mm. all scattered around how's growing up for you growing up in nima is oh, very you grew up, you're a nima boy yes <laughs> well, i was born in a uh, house number e sisters rock 16 mom will be chief moshi yadiga house <laughs> you know your address even till today where i was born is my room i kept the room i've been renting it from the landlords i've done it very well Sometimes I drive my children from East Legon and I'll bring them to see where I was born so that they will not feel like they have everything. And so when I took Mohammed there, he looked at the room and he said, Dada, ah, my washroom is even big, bigger <laughs> than my room. And he asked me, so where do you guys sit down and eat? We don't have bathroom in the rooms. The house has about... 50 rooms, but we have some small washroom that everybody would use every day. So I took him there for him to just see where we come from. Because sometimes you need to guide these children for them to know that even though God has blessed them, it's not everybody who has that blessing. Yes. I must say, I, I was a bit surprised. I don't know if you saw the look on my face when you said that you don't have much education. Yes. But you speak so well, and the places you go through, for God's sake, you are an ambassador, <laughs> you know. Uh, well, what happened? I will give the glory to God. Yeah. A lot of people said I'm lucky, but uh, I feel like I'm blessed. Mm. I'm not only lucky, but I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. Naturally, I was born to be an entrepreneur. Okay. I can create a business within. Two minutes. If I travel to villages, I see a lot of opportunities, so I try to make good use of them. And our parents like trading, they like doing businesses. Okay. I started early from okay. there. My father, may he so rest in peace, Alaji Amadu, and my uncle, Alaji Zakari, they are the ones who started doing black market at Mamobi. Mm. So at the age of 10, we started following up these businesses. So. The fastest way to learn is by people's experience, yeah. what people have gone through, and right. you through your personal experience. Mm. As a kid, I'm in the midst of elderly people, so I've been able to adopt early. Right. My parents, especially my brother who I've started working with, mm -hmm. is business, business, money, mm -hmm. money. They don't care about education. Okay. So when I was following him, and I'm going to school again. He is not happy. He wants me to come and then follow him to be changing money. But God has already blessed me. Yeah. I want to go to school. After JSS, I went to SS. Right. And then I decided, no, let me come and do my own businesses so that I can help the family. Because mm -hmm. my brother's kids need to go to school. And they, they don't care mm -hmm. about going to school. So I've started working. And most of them, I started putting them in SS and then to make sure that 
they continue with their education. And as a matter of fact, I don't joke with education. Mm. If anybody brings me issues with regards to education, mm -hmm. I quickly assist. Mm. And I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the Kuwait Fund. Mm. They are doing an amazing work. Right. Up there in the north, all they are doing is investing in education because we have a lot of problems in this country and education mm. is one. One, yeah. When you look at it, uh, recently I was listening to City FM, about 5,000 schools are still under trees, yeah. And if we said we are going to look at government alone to do this, it's an issue. Yeah. And then the, the United Arab Emirates Embassy also, they are also trying to do some other things, even though they are doing their best mm. to collaborate because up there we need a lot of education. Mm. I, when I traveled to the north on the last week, I visited a, a vocational school, mm. which is centered in Tamale, and they are doing an amazing work. They need a lot of help, yeah. especially skills. Mm. We need to transfer skills to our people mm. so that at the end of the day, they, they can own their own businesses. Mm. I'm very, very interested in doing so. Mm. So I was with the regional minister, and he's happy. Inshallah, we are going to help them mm -hmm. in terms of giving capacity to these students. And then the school also explained that uh, they need to expand. This year alone, they have received about 11,000 applications, but they can't even, they don't have the capacity to even admit 10% of that. So I think the, the Kuwait fund said they are going to help to build some schools for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So I think education is everything. Without education, even me and you will not be sitting, down, sitting here. down here. The yeah. little education I had has given me a lot of exposure. Mm. If I don't tell somebody that I, yeah. I did I did not go to that high level of education, yeah. nobody will be. I must forgive me. You seem quite young yourself, but um, you seem very wise. <laughs> very, very wise and uh, <laughs> very open-minded and very entrepreneurial. Um, when we came to your office, I had, you know, some of your staff discussing how you invited some street children to your office and decided to set them up. You gave each of them how much? The 500? The, the, I, ask, I always drive on the road and I see them selling. So I asked them to come to my office. So they came and I asked them, what do they need? in terms of financial support. You'll be amazed. The highest they quoted is 1,000 Ghana City. So I'm trying to use my microfinance to yeah. help people in the street, needy people. Sometimes we see a lot of people begging. They, they, they don't need help. Mm. The people who need help sometimes, they will not even have the opportunity to come and tell you that they need, need help. help. Unless you psych your mind and you look at them then you will attend to them. Mm. They need 500 Ghana city, 1,000 Ghana city for them to be doing their pretty, pretty businesses. Mm. Uh, before we celebrated uh, our Eid, right. the United Arab Emirates Embassy gave me some package, food package to share to the needy people. Mm. So I visited Shukra, Zongu. Okay, yeah. And there is, these my friends who are People with disability, they, mm -hmm. they are into sports, skates. Mm. I went to donate the food with them with Sheikh Abdulaziz. But I decided on my own to put jalabia for them because after our fasting, we need to wear nice mm -hmm. clothes to go and pray. And again, my microfinance extended a stuffed loan for them for about 20,000 Ghana CD without interest. Why did we do so? That before COVID, we went and do some donation for them. Mm -hmm. And then they told me, even though they are disabled people, they want to be working. They don't want, if they don't have any activity to do, they should be begging. Mm -hmm. So they requested some tricycles and things. But because of COVID, a lot of things they didn't they go, go well. well. So I decided since we are in Ramadan, we brought them iftar food, we brought them clothes. Let's also support them so that they can be doing things on their own. A lot of things is happening in this country 
that if we bring our heads together, we can help everybody to create businesses mm -hmm. because a lot of people need financial service. Financial inclusion is key. Right. The people who needed money to do their businesses, they can't get it. They the do. banks don't look at them. So Afro-Arab microfinance is coming to help women and the youth and to empower them into their petty petty How business. long have you been running the f microfinance? The microfinance will be 11 years this year. 11 years? Last year we celebrated our 10th anniversary and the theme is Women and Youth Empowerment. We got EcoBank on board. They have a project called Elevate Women. Mm -hmm. They give us some funding. So we group women from the market and then will be giving them some soft, soft loans to be doing. I don't even know what to, to, to say or ask again. The Zongo Boy, yeah. a group of companies. Inshallah. And not only is he developing himself, growing, he goes back to... So, so do, you, do, you, do you concentrate only on the Zongos and the Muslims? Do you help no, only no, Muslims? No, we, we can't do that. Because when you look at the Zongos... It's not only Muslims that are in Zongo. I remember my mates in, in primary and JSS, we have a lot of them who are Christians. But today, all of them are more or less like Muslims because we still live together. Yeah. We want to make poverty a history in this country. And I always advocate for Islamic financing. It's not for Muslims alone. For example, uh, Organization of Islamic Cooperation mm -hmm. is the second largest organization aside the UN in this world. The United States of America is not a member, but they are there as observers. And especially in this country, I will always say Ghana is a special country. Mm. Muslim, Christians, right. we are all the same. Yeah. Anytime there is Eid, Salah, I receive more Christians in my house than Muslim. Mm, on that note, I, Alaji, I'm still waiting for mine. I, I, we are going to do salary remix <laughs> here. <laughs> I receive them. Yeah. Even during Ramadan, if we are doing our iftar, yeah. I have a very good friend, uh, Andrew, Mr. Kwashi. Yeah. He would drive from Tema to come and then do iftar with us. Uh, we are blessed. Yeah. And I will tell you, Ghana is a special country okay. again. It's only here that you see Muslim and Christian, all of them, they are together. So Afro-Arab microfinance and the services that we do, we even have more Christian customers than Muslims. Even when you look at our employees, there, mm -hmm. my general manager yeah. Yeah. is a Christian. Yeah. The finance is a Christian. Even part of our board, I think it may be 50-50 now. Christians and Muslims, so we are all focusing to make sure that Ghana has been developed, people have jobs that they will be doing, mm. and everybody will be happy. Christians and Muslims, alhamdulillah, we are all the same. We are all the same. same. That's why we are so grateful to you for coming on board to support the Muslim Women's Conference. It's Father's Day, and we are celebrating an amazing young man, Ambassador Haji Amadou. If you drive around the Nima uh, runabout where the Royal Philly Station is, you see a huge billboard and his picture is always on the promoting one thing or the other. For years I saw it Shut and up. I always wondered what this was about. <laughs> this man is always until I met him, then I understood. Let me take a break when we come back. We'll get to know a bit more about him. What It's Afro-Arab group. So what, apart from microfinance, what else does he do? And how do people reach out to him? Those who, you know, are hearing of him for the first time. What is the future like? How involved when it comes to the youth? What plans has he, has he got? He says he's the father for all let me say thank you to gtp for my cloth my dress is by brie redra thank you so much to her makeup product always by note cosmetics and silver queen cosmetics beautifully applied by the one and only glow in the dark and my shoes by awos unisex boutique we'll be back
Welcome back to The Standpoint. I'm talking to Ambassador Haji Amadou. Um, let me say thank you to all those who sponsored and supported us during the Muslim um, Women's Conference. That's a pretty Sherry Special Rentals, Avia Natural Mineral Water, Afro Arab Microfinance and a Group, Glow Cosmetics, Two Steps Company Limited, Kemley's Culinary School, Woodin Le Creter, Maliki Pure Food, Silver Queen Cosmetics, Al Haji Tuafik Sule, uh, Ni Adote Odawulu the first, Al Haja Chief Mrs. Risika Tu Vanderpoi, and Chief Mrs. Boradihun Peregrino Prima. We are so grateful. And of course, Ambassador Al Haji Amadu, who was the first first to make the contribution towards the first one to make that being it was sharp and there there no gave it to us so we are grateful i was surprised because you know sometimes perceptions and we underestimate said okay because sometimes i go to people and they ask them, but you are christian and you are organizing muslim women's conference what is your interest in there but you never ask that question you yes. just because i have women at my heart hmm. During uh, his only prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, someone approached the messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, and asked him, among his parents, who should he have a lot of company or, I mean, service to? And the prophet said, his mother. Mm. And he asked again, aside the mother, who again? The prophet go ahead again and said, he mentioned his mother. And for the third time again, he asked, and who again? Mm -hmm. And the prophet said, his mother, three times. And then the fourth one before, he said, his father. Mm -hmm. Islam respects women a lot. So even if you are a Christian and you, you are, I mean, promoting this, I think we should mm -hmm. give you all the hands that you need to make sure that the program or the project you are doing has become successfully. Women are very, very important in our life. Mm -hmm. They are our mothers, our sisters, mm -hmm. our grandmoms, our daughters, mm -hmm. and we really have to make time mm -hmm. and invest in them. So women and youth empowerment mm -hmm. is at my heart. Mm -hmm. So at any time. God bless you. I I'm just thinking, something just crossed my mind. Where does your mother live now? She's at uh, Abavana down in my senior brother's house. Okay. Because I don't know, it just crossed my mind that your mother would not move to East Legon with you. It's true. <laughs> I'm easily, when I built my house in East Legon, I built her own chamber for her, which has everything. Mm -hmm. So I told her, now I'm going to move her to East Legon. She said, my son, thank you, but I cannot go. I asked her why. She said, I've been living with your brother and his children and their wives for a very long time. Why would do you want to take me away from them? All I want you to do is come to me every day. But I'll be living here. She's there and she's staying with my I don't know, it just crossed my mind that she wouldn't yeah. go. No, 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 she, she will not go. She will not well, go what anymore. is your most memorable moment with your mother? A lot. Uh, because we live in Zongo, there is demand there every day. Sometimes if people did not get what they want from me, they go to her. Mm -hmm. And when she talks, I will not say anything. I will do whatever she asks. So one day I came to her and then she told me that she wanted me to do something to somebody. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to complain. For the first time in my life, she slapped me. And she said, do you think you are handsome than anyone here? Or do you think you are wiser than everybody here? Whatever you have, God is giving it to you so that you use it to help people. It does not belong to you alone. And so it changed your life? Completely. And every day I think about this woman and I have peace in me. Because it's true. At the end of the day, whatever we are looking for on this earth, where are we taking it? Mm. So they say a successful person is somebody who look at the opportunity to help others. Mm. Not with money. It's not if they are talking about success, 
It's not about, oh, I have this X amount of money, so I'm a successful person. No. How many people's life have you touched? Who and who have you helped? Mm. So should in case one day you know more, then people will be saying good stuff about you. And mm. I think at Afro-Arab group, that is what we are looking at. Mm. Making investment based on changing people's lives. lives. And that is it. Yeah. When you look at all the richest people in this world, they are solving problems. Mm. Elon Musk is solving mm. problem. That yeah. is why he's making money. money. Yeah. Bill Gates is solving problem. Yeah. Just come down here in Africa. Yeah. Ali Kodong got it. He's solving problem. Yeah. When you solve problem, the money will come. Oh. But when you think about making money alone, that is where the problem is. And I think in our own little way, mm. we are solving people's problem. Yeah. And then so apart from the microfinance, what else do you do? We are into real estate and properties. Okay. And that is what is also dear to me because I'm focusing on doing affordable housing in this country. Hmm, this country, affordable housing is not affordable. Oh, yes. But you see, like I said before, we are looking at solving problems, hmm. not to make money. Even though making money is part it's of part the of business, yeah. you understand me? Because before we can have affordable housing here, someone must make a sacrifice. Hmm. And I think we are working on it and inshallah, very soon, Ghanaians, especially the low-income earners, mm -hmm. will get something that will take some burden off their head. You will need government to also come in. And if they buy your idea, you can be able to help people. You can't do it alone. We will look at talking to the right people and see the kind of help that we will do. And then to be able to help people. Like you said, so many times we hear affordable housing, housing and then yeah. what comes... From it, it's very, very expensive. But when someone wants to solve a problem, inshallah, Allah will help him mm. to do that. I believe the model Afro Arab properties is bringing, we can be able to at least reduce the housing deficit in this country. Mm. Like I tell you, Yona just visited me. Mm. We have a discussion, mm -hmm. and he said, Alaji, I buy your discussion. Mm. I buy the idea. So please. When you come to the north, I'm going to provide land for you to do that. So you see, land is also a factor that makes their houses uh, yeah. difficult. So if you have people like this giving you out for land to be able to do, government to may come in and then take some one or two things, some tax reliefs for us because you are doing it in affordable housing. All will also be a factor. And then there is a secret that if we put one or two things together, it can be able to happy. I believe uh, may so rest in peace uh, the United Arab Emirates yeah, president who, who passed away, away yeah. Sheikh Zaid. Mm. They don't understand the meaning of impossible. There is no. What, 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 what is it? It's impossible. No. Everything is possible. possible. It's just a mindset. It's just mm. the idea. And most importantly, we should come together. Mm. It's possible that nothing is impossible. I'll let, you, let me. This is not part of it, but just as you mentioned, the late uh, president of the United Arab Emirates, when you saw him being buried, mm -hmm. he was a powerful, rich man. You saw how simple they just buried him. What crossed your mind? Well, I am a Muslim, and uh, I know at the end of the day. Every Muslim, that is what is going to be your end. During Ramadan, I visited Saudi Arabia for Umrah. On my way coming, my good friend, Sheikh Hamad, invited me to Al Hain, and he showed me the president's house. It's a very huge mansion. They have everything there in Al Hain. Seeing him bury him according to our religion, if death did not advise you, then you can never get any advice in this world. Money, power, wealth, everything is in these people. Mm. This one alone should be able to calm you down. How you communicate with people, how you see people, and to tell you that this world will not take anything away apart from our good deeds. Yeah. Even for a non-Muslim, for very humbling. For sure. 
that is why. It was very humbling seeing him be simple, just his white, Sim beautiful, and then, and then, wrapped under, and then. And then that is it. And that is the end. He took nothing. That is the end. We came with nothing, and he shall allow you to go away with nothing. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that will follow you is this the good deed. Mm -hmm. We started a pilot project. I sold it to a family, and I gave them 10 years to pay. They are Christians. So one December they called me and then they said, Alaji, can you come to our house? We want to, I mean, celebrate this Christmas That's with it. you. Because what you have given us, no one has given it mm -hmm. to us before. So you see, this is the kind of life we need to yeah. live. Yeah. This family, every day they remember you, they yeah. will pray for you. You'll pray for you. Uh -huh. So we want to live a life. And I believe that is what all leaders should look at. I know what you said as you've been entrepreneurial um, since you were a child. You know, it's always business, business, and you want to start business. But what was your childhood dream? The dream is to make sure that my family have a better life. Mm. And again, the people we are living within. And it cut across. When you have a dream like that, you have to make sure that Everybody in this country also have the blessing that God has given you. you. I want to live a normal life that everybody is living. Sometimes people come to me and then they will say, "Ah, you are well, eh? I thought I'm going to see some big man. Big man. So you are sitting here, and then I say, "That is life." And I'm living a simple life and a happy life. People I grew up with, I don't see myself above them. Mm always I'm down to earth. I respect people. I don't feel like maybe I'm privileged more than some somebody else. And I think I'm living a happy life. I drive alone. I don't fight. Mm -hmm. I don't argue with people. Every Saturday in the morning, I organize football matches from the bases in the community. They drive to Islamo, we play. If they want, they come to my house, we swim, we eat, everybody goes. And I'm happy. I think that is the kind of life I want mm -hmm. to live. And moreover, I want to make sure that we do a lot of projects and activities to touch people's life, mm -hmm. especially the poor people. How many children do you have? Three. What, how many girls? And... Uh, one girl and mm -hmm. two boys. What do they think of you? Oh. They see me as, as a great father, mm. especially uh, the firstborn, who is Mohammed. He's very intelligent, very smart. Mohammed likes to learn. Mm. He will ask me about Afro-Arab, and he, he wants to How understand. Is Mohammed is 10 this year. He told me uh, he wants to be an inventor. Okay. Yeah, so he wants to go to MIT in the United States, in Massachusetts. At 10 years, he already knows where he wants to go. Mohammed is very smart. He will be telling me about Elon Musk and uh, how are we is my mother too. <laughs> She's there on her own. I'm sure and she gets the, special treatment, you know, huh? Very special, <laughs> very, very special. I call her my mother and then she will be laughing. Uh -huh. Anytime I call her that, she herself, she's happy. And I, I told her, I pray she get the good side of mom. You know, as soon as I asked you about your children, mm. your demeanor changed. Yes. The smile on your face and your face just glowed. Yes. Fatherhood means a lot to a you. A lot. A lot. Uh, they said the father is the head of family. Mm. Uh, but I believe mothers also do a lot. So mm. if we are the head alone, look at the whole body. It's the mothers that are keeping <laughs> it. So I give them a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. And then the last born is Abdul Baki. Who is okay. only two years now. Now. Uh, mm. And are you a hands on that? You take them out, you play yes, with yes, them? Yes, yes. I, I take them out, I play with them, I travel with them. Yesterday they said they want ice cream. Before I get home, I have to buy the ice cream. When I came, all of them are slept uh, except Mohammed. And then he gave me ice, ice cream. He said, Then it's food to, to take it. Let me take another break. When we come back, you give me your word your final word speaking to the young people of today sharing with them how they can gradually i'll just give you the time i'll just ask you one question and actually speak to them because um you definitely have a lot of experience
you know, definitely have a lot of experience. Well, once again, let me say thank you to all those who supported and sponsored us during the Muslim Women's Conference. We are also grateful to Go Got You Got, um, Yep Cleaning Services, Juice Time, 100% Fruit Juices. Thank you to House of Food, Auntie Vera and the team, Mrs. Sofor Poco and the team. We are so grateful to you. Kodam's Gifts and Stationery, thank you. And then Standing Floral Deco, they gave us the natural plants and artificial plants as well. We are so grateful. Everybody who is support and we need sponsorship. In July, the standpoint is going to be 14 years. Wow. Can you believe 14 years? We need sponsorship. We need the support. So if you want to see us on air, we are 15 years, 20 years. Please, please, please sponsor us and support us. We take a break when we come back. I know you can't wait to hear his final words. He is indeed a well of wisdom. We'll be back. Hey, welcome back. Have I told you about my broken but beautiful um, trip and tour? Yes, in July, that's next month, from the 1st to the 3rd, I'll be in UK uh, for a program. I have another one in Scotland. The all details are on the screen, so you can watch it even as I speak now. Details are on the screen right now. We, uh, from the 8th to the 10th, I'll be in Scotland. From the 14th to the 17th, in London. Yes, for another program, and then will be in U.S. from the 21st to the 31st of July. And on the 23rd of July in U.S., in New Jersey, be at the Miss Africa USA. Miss Africa USA. That is not just a beauty pageant, but with a purpose, a beautiful platform that helps women to unleash their potential and leap forward to greater heights. Now, my guest today, just in case you just joined in, is Ambassador Alhaji Salamu Amadou. Yes. He is the chairman of Afro-Arab Group, which also operates the Afro-Arab Microfinance. They are at Kokum Limli, not too far from where I am, doing great things. And he's come a long way from the Zongo to where he is now. And he hasn't forgotten his past. Still young, still growing, achieved a lot, but he who washes his hands well eats with the elders. Ambassador, yes. what have you got to say to the youth of today? Well, as a youth and an ambassador, my advice to the youth is to stay focused. Mm. You should stay away from all these negativities. Drugs, gambling, and all these things, they are not going to help. You can see there is no one who is doing drugs that have his peace of mind. Mm. No, you can't stay home, you can't sleep, or you are doing some fictitious businesses, you will not be happy. The only thing is you should stay focused. Ghana is a rich country, mm. we are blessed. The peace we have here alone is enough. Mm -hmm. Even our neighboring countries, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. We used to travel from Accra to Burkina Faso, to Niger, to Mali. Mm -hmm. Today, even if you are paying me millions of dollars, mm -hmm. I, will, I will never try that. Before, if you want me to go to those areas and you give me a ticket, I would love to be in my car to drive and go. But today, you, you can't even try it. When recently I was in the National Chief Imam's office and then they say they bring some letter for some security threat and all these things. We should be very careful in this country. The peace alone we have here is alhamdulillah, it's enough for us. Yes, we, we are in hard time, but we should not forget what God has given us. If we, if we see the good things that God has done for Mother Ghana, we will know that we are blessed. It's not going to be easy but we should stay focused and concentrate on our businesses. And again, for the youth, we should focus on creating our own businesses. We should be entrepreneurs. Mm. I believe this way will also make us be focused. If 
for example, if you have been able to create a business that you can employ one person, it's enough for you. If every youth can be able to do that, it will help. The government is doing its own part. If we said we are going to put our hopes and dreams on the government, I don't think we will get it the way we like it. Right. Yes, I respect them, but we should be able to work on ourselves so that we can achieve a good life. Ghana is a blessed country. Mm. And if we concentrate, inshallah, we'll get it the way we want it. Mm. A lot of complaints, excuses, mm. and blame is so much on our airwaves. Negativity is people were saying this, it will not solve our problems. I think for us to get there, we need to, I mean, change our style, mm. not to talk much. The problems are there, and we can't do away without problems. But we should find a way so that at least we can have a good life mm. here. It's not easy. If I tell you sitting down here today is easy, mm. and everything is going up. Yeah. Prices are not stable. Yeah. The system is some kind of way. Sometimes I think about even the employees. Yeah. Things are going up. What do we do to make sure that they can also, I mean, meet up with standard and all these things? Yes, we understand. And then we should put a lot of prayers. Yeah. We need to be praying day and night mm. for us to be able to overcome all this. Thing. Uh, today they are talking about post-COVID, yeah. talking about Russia and Ukraine war, and then it's true. Mm. I have a delegation from Bangladesh that visited me recently. They told me, Alaji, we are looking at opportunity of farming here because we get our farming food in Ghana. in Ghana. We get our food from Ukraine. And because of this war, from now to five years' time, we don't think we can be able to get the food. I travel to Tolo in, in the northern region. There are so many lands there. I don't know what we are doing. We can feed ourselves and even export this food ourselves. So I think these are things the youth need to be doing. Not only men alone, even women can, can venture into all these things. The opportunities in this country are so many. But I said, most of the time, the youth will tell you they have no one to help them. They have ideas, but they have no one to help them. Madam, I'll tell you something. Mr. Jepong, Zoom Lion, mm -hmm. is a great man. Mm. There was a day I visited him. He's my neighbor. And I'm also having that kind of mentality. Who will help me? Who will help me? Mm. And I told him, he, he laughs, calls me chairman. And he said, mm. chairman, let me tell you something. Aside God, you need to push to yourself. It's not easy. If I tell you it's easy, but where would that help come from? But if you push yourself and you are determined and focused, inshallah, you'll get there. The Quran says, Whatever you wish, Allah will give it to you. Just push. Mm. Some of our youth is terrible. When they see you, they just want you to put your hands in pockets and give, give them money. Them. No. But some of them too, when they engage you, they try to get some ideas. Or they have some ideas, they will bring it to you for us to work it out. Do you understand me? There is no harm in trying. We should be focused. We should the talking is too much on TV, on radio, on social media, government. The government, to be frank with you, they can't do everything for us. Mm -hmm. They can't. Any government that will come and say, oh, I'll do this, I'll do that. If, if your hope is on them, mm -hmm. then automatically I don't think mm -hmm. you'll be able to, to solve it. Yes, they are there to do their own work. We should also try to be focused and be determined and have our own plan to do things. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get there. All we pray for government is, from my side is for them to bring policies that will favor especially the poor people. For example, when I think about young people want to do business and they can't get a thousand Ghana City to do it. So mm -hmm. this side ever. Look at the way interest rate is going. Access to funding. 20. It's key because we are blessed. It's not like we are we are not that developed that Somebody cannot create a business. Mm -hmm. With small amount of money, you can be able to create a business. I think government should be able to get some kind of policies like this to help the young people. Because some, some people will come to their microfinance, all they need is 500 Ghana CD to do business. 
and it should be easy way for them to be able to tap in mm-hmm. these monies and then do these businesses. I think government should be able to create an enabling environment for the youth. But for work, to be frank with you, we have a lot to do in this country. <sighs> Ambassador, God bless you. And yeah, I, I heard you mention going to UK or yeah. all these places. Mm-hmm. And you have to come to Saudi too. Okay. I want to come. Yes, oh, yes, and let uh, me say thank uh, you so much for um, getting the Al Al Hood eh, Al Huda yeah, 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 eh, yeah in Dubai. Yes, the yeah, media yeah, yes. to partner yeah. um, the Muslim Women's yeah. Conference. Yes. That was really, you know, one of the when you are going. Please take me along. Yeah, yeah. When they you, come here, inshallah, we'll inshallah, take you. There. We'll take uh, him. Yes. At yeah. least then you get the opportunity to become Ajia. You uh, see, oh, look at you. You see, oh. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I have uh, to. When you get I to Saudi, to, then you uh, become Ajia. Okay, you uh, see, when we started the Muslim Women's Conference 10, ten years ago, yeah, they gave me Hajia. Mm-hmm. You know, Hajia gives you Hajia. Uh, when you get there, then we'll give you some gold teeth. Well, you, then you become <laughs> complete. <Ajia. laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, Today we no, celebrate no. You, you, you know, as a father, a unique father, not only to your children, yes. but for the many things you're doing, especially for women and children and young people. And we say congratulations. Allah continue to bless you, open doors for you, because obviously when you get, you do not forget those behind you and you pull everybody along. We of the standpoint are grateful to you. And I know there are many people who are grateful for what you do. And um, stand by because you know, as the many people are watching you today, you'll be coming. God bless you. Congratulations to you too. I'm, I'm, you. I'm really happy and I'm impressed with the good work that you are doing. Thank you. May Allah reward you, inshallah. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 I'll be back with a of me. Okay. Years ago, well before I even got married, I was invited to speak on a Father's Day. And I chose to speak on the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. A father is supposed to be hallowed. A father is supposed to be a blessing. A father is supposed to be adored. A father is supposed to be adored. A father is supposed to be the one we all run to and gather around. A father is a provider. And when you say bread, it is not just the food of bread. Bread symbolizes so many things. Comfort, honesty. Bread gives life. So to be a father means a lot. And anyone who calls yourself father or people refer to you as a father, don't take it lightly. It's a responsibility. <laughs> it is a responsibility. It's a very heavy load you carry as a father. But you know what? A father knows how to cry. A father knows how to communicate. A father knows that it's okay to be weak sometimes. A father knows that he hasn't got it all. He's not, I mean, he's willing to learn and unlearn. A father is very dynamic. A father knows how to hold the hands of the people who need him, even when he's, he, 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 he's broken and he's hurting. A father knows how to gather. So, if you're a father, or people call you father, I see much respect. I only pray that you live up to your expectation. I only pray that you become the, 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 the meaning of the word father. People have many acronyms and many meaning to the, to the letters that form the word father. 
But for me, as a Christian woman, Father is based on the Lord's Prayer. And as a Muslim, you know what fatherhood means. I'm a woman with super crazy faith in God. I know God has got all of us covered, but he has given us wisdom. Please, let's apply it. Happy Father's Day to all fathers. And no, if you're a woman and you are a single mother and you're doing everything, no, you are not a father. You are a mother. You are more than enough. You are more than enough. You are capable. God created you to be able to do it. And if you're a father, you're a single father, you are not a mother. You are a father. Let's all learn to accept who we are, work with it, without trying to be something that we're not created to be. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now.